A little while back, I quilted a quilt for Kent Lee called Chocolate Bunny because I like to challenge myself sometimes and I wanted to see if I could pull this one off. I liked that quilt so much that I wanted to have a little piece of Chocolate Bunny in my fifth year quilt and this block right here was the perfect one to be able to do that in. I get asked a lot of times how I set this up and so this is a good spot to show you what I actually did. I used this diamond pattern right here, but I had to divide it out because you can see that there is a connecting line between these channels that are in this particular pattern. And I wanted it to be able to look like it was line work quilting. So I had to delete out these connecting lines right here. So let me do that right quick by going to nodes, hitting my D on my keyboard, and continuing to divide out those lines, greater than and less than, is going to help me with that. I am just taking out that little connector line on that particular pattern. Greater than and less than. Whenever you have patterns that are really close together, sometimes you have to scroll in close and you have to continue to keep dividing until you get the pattern that you want. You see now I have just this one line, so I'm going to delete that. I'm going to do greater than and less than. I left a little piece of it, but that's okay for demonstration purposes. Greater than and less than, delete that. And now I have basically the pattern that I want. I'm going to set this up in repeat patterns. So I need to save this now manipulated pattern because I need to use it in repeat patterns and copy and paste won't do me any good. The reason I needed to go ahead and divide this out is because if I set this up in repeat patterns, I would have to divide out those lines on every single pattern. This way, I already have them divided out. So I'm going to right click and I'm going to click on save pattern. I don't want to save it to my database. I only want to save it to my project file because I may or may not ever use this pattern again. I would name it as double diamond or chocolate bunny diamond and hit save and close and you can see that it goes to the top of my patterns Now I've already done that one time but I have saved it again to show you the process once I have that pattern saved I can hit the X in the selected pattern and delete that I have drawn a boundary line for my nine inch block and I have gone and done the stitch in the ditch around all of these little applique pieces and I have converted that to a boundary. So I have two boundaries. I'm gonna select my pattern. I'm gonna go to repeat patterns. And the first thing that I'm gonna do is change this reference point type to upper left. And I'm going to click the upper left of the block because that's the first thing that you have to do with version 7 in repeat patterns. Because I already have my 9 inch boundary done, that helps me to see better what that pattern is going to look like and what the density is going to be. I'm going to unlock the total size because I want to decide the number of repeats in rows. So I'm going to add the number of repeats and you see that these are connected and that's because Creative Studio defaults to connect in repeat patterns. It changed the size of that pattern. So I want to left click on reset so that I can decide whether that's going to be a good fit for me or not. Put a second row on there and then a third row and I want to change it to alternating plus row on top. I'm going to continue adding rows because what I'm going to do now is close up this spacing because there is too much spacing in the rows of that pattern. Close some of these boxes. 
so that I am able to get to the spacing. And I'm going to say minus maybe one and a half inches, and that's a pretty good fit right there. I'm going to add another row because I have a gap here at the top. So let's add one more row. And I'm going to say, OK, select these patterns and move them up. What I want to do is have my boundary lines cut these top diamonds in half, cut the left side and the right side diamonds in half, and the bottom row of diamonds. So I am going to select this outside row because I don't need that one. Hit delete on the keyboard, select my entire group of patterns and use my F9 anchors to pull up my patterns until they fit in that boundary the way that I want them to. I want to be sure that the top ones do the half of the diamond, left side, right side, and bottom. And I think that's a pretty good fit. So I'm going to unselect it. When you look at my boundaries, let me highlight them for you. You can see that this top row of diamonds barely touches those boundaries. So I can select all of these. And because I am in repeat patterns, I can say fill inside and it's going to fill those spaces. On this particular one right here, it went a little bit straight line, but if I slow the machine down a pretty good bit, then I can avoid that particular flower applique. This one on this side, it cut straight through, which I am not happy about. So I can manipulate that if I want to by dividing out the pattern just like this. And I would probably come around here and do this, then do my draw arc, have my endpoint on, click that, click that point, and click that point, hit escape. And now you can see how easily I was able to manipulate that. I've got to go back and select this pattern and do order join. It now sews continuously and I would combine it just to be able to not lose this little piece of pattern right there. So that's the pattern that I would sew out first. Toggle that as sewn. Now it's time to go to this row right here. Because this is only nine inches, I don't have to roll the quilt or do any relocating. I'm going to select my pattern and I'm going to turn my options back on because I want you to see where the start and end of the patterns are because that is important. Because this pattern start and end is on the left side, if I tell Creative Studio to fill inside now, this is what I was talking about with the pattern making a connecting line. It has no choice with fill because that's what fill is intended to do. So I'm going to control Z. I'm going to take my pattern and I want the start and end of this pattern to be underneath my boundary. So I'm going to flip it horizontally. The pattern is symmetrical, so that's not a problem. I'm going to go to nodes and I'm going to hit my D on my keyboard because a straight line is the one that shows me where that pattern has a jump stitch. This pattern does not need to do fill because it's avoiding all the boundaries and so is this one. This particular one right here, if I say fill inside on that one, because I place the start and end of the pattern underneath that boundary, you can see that I have no black pattern lines. So that means that that pattern is going to stitch out much like it would a trim and not do any overstitching. Let me do virtual stitch out so you can see that. 
what I have done by placing that start and end underneath that boundary is I have changed the start and end of that pattern. And so now I'm not going to have any overstitching, which is a pretty good bonus for me. This next one right here, let's take this one and toggle it sewn. So if I do virtual stitch out on that one, it's not going to start with that pattern. This particular one, you can see from the boundary, that one crosses over several different areas. If I say fill inside on this particular one, it's just going to be a mess. Watch what happens. Because it is a fill, Creative Studio has no choice but to go and find the next area that it's supposed to fill and then go and fill that area. Now, obviously, it wasn't supposed to make this line right here, but that's going to be the nature of what Phil is going to do. I'm going to hit Escape, and I'm going to scroll out a little bit, and I'm going to hit Control z because I want to show you how I would deal with that particular one. I'm going to take this pattern and I'm going to go to nodes and I'm going to divide out that jump stitch again. I have just the top of this pattern or the outside of this pattern. So I'm going to hit D on my keyboard and this particular one, I am watching this side on the right side. I'm going to hit my D on my keyboard and do fill inside. I'm going to go back and select this line and I'm going to delete it because if I scroll in really close, it's just a little bitty part right here. And I don't think that's going to matter in the look of the quilt on that smaller block. So I'm just going to delete that. I'm going to select this part of the pattern. The start and the end or underneath the leaf applique. I'm going to say fill inside. Basically, what Creative Studio does in this case is change this more to act like a trim. I'm going to go to nodes and I'm going to divide out this one. This pattern crosses over, so I've got to do the same thing again. Say fill inside, greater than and less than. I may or may not decide that I want that particular point right there to quilt because it may matter in the look of the quilt. I would change my grid size to quarter inch and make that decision. But in the meantime, I'm just going to say fill. I'm going to go to the next pattern and I'm going to say fill. Phil was a little bit fussy on this one right here, so I'm going to change to nodes and I'm going to pull this pattern up underneath here. I would probably hit fill again and it works that time. So there's always going to be a workaround if something like that happens to you in Creative Studio. Greater than and less than because I need this pattern in the middle and I'm going to say fill inside and hit escape. And now you're going to see what I have done to be able to manipulate those patterns. So this is the way that I did this particular block and just continue doing this all around. I would quilt one diamond at a time and then check my boundaries and make sure that my boundaries were still accurate by using my crosshairs and just placing my crosshair on this boundary right here. You weren't going to have much shrinkage because this block was so small, but you would on a larger quilt. When I get to this pattern on this side, I would again flip it horizontally to put the start and end on the outside, tell it to fill. And Creative Studio would make a little bit of stitch in the ditch right here. But if I slow it down and quilt just inside that seam line, then that would be okay. Let me show you if I select this one and I do fill inside. You see why I had to flip it? Because I did not want this connecting line. And by once again flipping that pattern horizontally, and saying fill inside, 
that gets rid of that connecting line. The same situation on the bottom, fill inside. It avoided most of the boundaries so that I was able to do that one right there. And that's how I got the look of this particular block. So I got to keep a little bit of chocolate bunny in my fifth year quilt. 